Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. I am Ruben Abati. I am OG Akpi. There is a popular saying that the graveyard is the richest place on earth because it's, it is here that you will find all hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled, the books that were never written, and the songs that were never sung, the inventions that were never shared, the cures that were never discovered, all because someone was too afraid to take that first step keep with that problem, or determined to carry out their dream. Joining us today to discuss how we can take our ideas from concept to reality is a man who has done the same thing himself. Steve Babaeko, the CEO of Extreme Ideas. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Oji. Hi, you. Steve. Good Thank to you. see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Well, congratulations. Thank you, with What we've been able to do yes. in like just yes, about six years. Yes, yes. You started in advertising. And advertising is big business in Nigeria today. Well, it is. It is. Um, and you like creating. I love creating. Okay. I live can, for creating. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us a little about, you know, uh, ideas conception, the creative concept, uh, up to the point of execution? I, I think uh, uh, before I even dive deep into that, I'd like to speak to what Oji said in our intro. To okay. say the, the graveyard is supposedly the, the, <laughs> the richest, richest place, place yes. on, on earth. Mm -hmm. I, I think... When it comes to creativity, that's from uh, is it Leo Burnett? Yeah, I think mm. so. Something that's like that. Leo Burnett. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when it comes to creativity and like conceptualization, conceptualizing and bringing it to life, it is just about the fear. So a mentor of mine spoke to me and said, "Fear is the biggest enemy of mankind." Mm. So, so most of the time, people have great ideas, but just between having that idea and bringing it and nurturing it to fruition, that fear sort of stands between you and that whole goal and purpose. So it is conquering those fears that allows you to become great and allow those ideas to see the light of day. Mm. Okay, how does this relate to the question I asked about advertising yeah. and the process Absolutely. from concept to creation to okay. execution? Yeah, from concept to creation to execution mm. is about, usually in advertising, because I mean, when you write your books or whatever for prose, it is Dr. Abati just bringing out his own idea about what he thinks on a particular subject or topic. But in advertising, a client commissions you, so you are like a commercial writer, to say, we have a marketing challenge here. Give us the best way to express a solution, something that can convince people to take an action in favor of a certain brand. So you need to now sit down to say, within the cultural milieu that we operate in, what is that metaphor, either visual, oral, that I can deploy to make people now see, oh, really, okay. So I should be using Glow Network instead of the other network, of, for instance, you know. That's the kind of stuff that, that happens. Yeah, but the bottom line mm -hmm. is for you, as the advertising expert, to, to help you identify the patron yeah. uh, to sell their products. Absolutely. Uh, to gain a market share Absolute, for them. Absolutely. Uh, right? Uh, you, you, you started with Prima Garnet. At with, what, actually, with MC and such and okay, such. Okay, yeah. such and such. Yes. But at what point did you decide to stand on your own? Well, I, I say at this age, sometimes, I think when I turned 40, something happened to me when I turned the age 40. Then I started to look at, okay, I work in advertising. I, 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 was, I, I was a top guy in, in, in 141 where I was creative mm. director. But I now started to think of legacy. What am I going to do? Is this... Shall we continue to run this business the way it's been, or is there a possibility to change something, especially within the digital context that we're operating today? I think it was at that point that I decided, let me conquer my fear and go out there and throw my heart in the ring. And start but if you look at uh, the advertising industry in Nigeria, I mean, it started with West African uh, publicity, publicity yeah. uh, when UEC wanted to uh, set up uh, a marketing, uh, brand marketing arm. Yes. Yes. and then Linters and all of that. Absolutely. And then you have the Rosabel generation, Insight, and all Absolutely. of these groups. But today, almost everybody is into advertising. Yeah. I mean, uh, some are registered with the AAPN, some are not registered. Um, is it about competition, or is it that you guys are making a lot of money and everybody <laughs> wants to set up a boutique? Oh my God. Again, uh, it's, a, there's a, it's a bit of so many uh, factors. One in Nigeria, I always crack this joke that if you want to start a war on your street, mm. set up a barbing salon, for mm. instance. <laughs> Once people perceive that that barbing salon is doing well, you wake up one morning, Dr. Abatia, you see 10 barbing salons on the same street. Mm. I think that's what's happened uh, with the advertising industry. It's just the same thing with music. People think there's money in music, so you find all commerce now trying to set up some kind of record label or the other. 
But with advertising, the law is still there, though, that for you to even be able to practice advertising, mm -hmm. you have to be an APCON up registered practitioner. So APCON has to license you as an individual, and then AAAN, uh, formerly AAAPN, oh, yes. Yes, now has to license you, so you have to be a registered member. So uh, we had an election at the last AGM. Uh, Ikechi Odibo, the CEO of uh, DDB Lagos, is the president. I imagine as the uh, vice president. And all of this proliferation of unlicensed practitioners are some of the issues that we intend well, to Well, okay. you see, advertising mm -hmm. is said to have started in the Garden of Eden, somebody oh, wow. said, when uh, the serpent Money to sell Absolutely. the forbidden fruit to, to Eve. Eve. <laughs> yes. well, who you was know? that person that said that? <laughs> <laughs> and Eve, you know, because it was a case of advertising. <laughs> 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 so, yes. so, the serpent made his speech, and Eve bought into it, yes. and all these issues uh, started. started. Okay. Now, there are sharp practices in, sure. in advertising, sure. definitely. Now you are a member of the executive. Yes, How does that executive intend to deal with the issue of ethic, ethics? in advertising practice in Nigeria? Well, again, that's why with the AAAN, we have the ethics committee. Okay. So if there were like an issue that bothers on somebody like flouting the law or doing something unethical, uh, the ethics committee will sit and look at the issues. And if the person is found guilty, there are certain penalties. But what are the specific right? things that advertising agencies must not do, for example? Well, for instance, the, the, the code says that you must not uh, demarket another ad agency. You must not uh, even advertise yourself. Mm. Your, so the big, the, your biggest advertised form of advertising as an ad agency is the work you do for your clients. For your clients. So okay. you can't see us now putting an ad in the newspaper mm. to say, come to Extreme Ideas and leave uh, agency B. That would be wrong. Okay, you so know, stuff what, stuff the question like I have for that: How do you actually stay on top? Because I know that you have ideas. You have to like really share your ideas with clients. How do you keep that idea safe and have no one take it and run <laughs> with it? Because you'll have to go around and pitch ideas, correct? Yeah. Well, in order for people to actually buy into your idea. So how how does that work? How do you manage? What that? is difficult sometimes? You know, it, it, you just like you have not all agencies have. Uh, straightforward, <laughs> sometimes not all clients are straightforward. So you go pitch an idea, they tell you, oh, you didn't win, we didn't, we're not going yes. to your idea. And the next thing, it's somewhere they've else, taken yeah. the idea, repackaged it somewhat and give it. So, I mean, the thing is just to make sure that you just keep fighting and calling out some of those issues when they happen. You know, we have our ways through, uh, maybe you go through the advent as well to, to make complaints if, when it gets that bad. But hmm. beyond that, you just to have, keep fighting for your ideas. Find a way to own your ideas and make sure that you don't let them take them away from you. Wow. So wait, wait, you said that there are policies in place now that can actually protect your ideas once you've shared and you've seen that it's been taken? Or is that, well, is, is that mean, the case we, here in, in Nigeria? Yeah, if you pitch, for instance, I would recommend that normally we'll tell you we've pitched this material. If you say we've not won, uh, we'll write to you to say, well, we still own the rights to these ideas. Okay. The only time you lose the right to the ideas is when you've given it to the client and you've been paid for it. Okay. But before then, I uh, make a compelling statement. What, what, what are the major challenges that you see in the industry? Well, part of the major challenges we still see, one, I think is still the proliferation of so many agencies, including the suit briefcase agencies and the non-registered guys. So those are the quacks, the charlatans that just come to make the industry look bad. I think that needs to be fixed. And on the other hand, I think government still being one of the biggest spenders on marketing comms. How do we engage government in a very positive way to make sure that they channel most of the work that they do through the registered ad agencies? I think that's very important because what you find is that ministry or ex-ministry, why puts out communication, it's just been horridly knocked together by somebody. You really don't know who it is. It makes the ministry look bad. For somebody coming from mass, landing in Nigeria and seeing those kind of communication, it's like, oh, this is the true state of Nigerian advertising. I think those are the key uh, problems I think we're facing at the moment. You, you don't have issues, for example, with uh, multiple taxation or with regulatory oh, agencies? I, I mean, because I see billboards around town with, uh, you know, uh, red marks, yes. uh, remove this billboard yeah, and yeah. all of that. You know, how does that work? Mm. 
you know, they, they, they clamp down on signages Absolutely. or the regulation. The signages that. again falls into another, into, into the purview of some other body, which is the OAN, okay. Outdoor Advertising yes. Association of Nigeria. But for Tripoli, and of course, we, the issue of multiple taxation is there, you know, as most ad agencies will still fall under SME category. So where you find between the LIRS and the FIRS, all of the tax issues you find there, if you don't manage... No, but you should pay tax. No, no, of course. That should not be seen it, as a it, challenge. No, 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 you should pay tax, but all of the other charges beyond the LIR, beyond the statutory tax and all of the multiple taxation okay. you face multiple. are some of the things. I mean, as a responsible company, you must pay your tax, you know. Okay. But I see you've moved into tax. music. Uh, yes. It's not just uh, advertising you yes. do, you also have extreme music. Absolutely. Uh, is it that you want to make more money? <laughs> uh, the money in advertising is not enough. And so you're, you're you want to expand the pool, <laughs> you know, I really, I really, so that more money can come in. I really wish there's the kind of legendary money people talk about in music. It's there, but I think the music actually started for me almost in between my advertising career. I think in 2008 I set up uh, Extreme Music used to fund it with my salary that I earned from advertising. But it's always been the passion. If you look at Nigeria, almost 65% of our population falls into that youth category. What do we do? I mean, I always find it difficult. Yeah. What am I going to tell my grandchildren when I finally grow old? That I, walk, I pass through this country as a citizen with all of the talented young men and women that you encounter every day. What did you do to support them to, bring, to, to come to? to the peak of, of their talents, you know. So that was why I set up uh, Extreme Music. And we have talents like Praise, uh, Simi, uh, Dapo, that we just signed on uh, a few months ago, and all of that. But what, what attracts you to a particular musician? What does good music mean to you? Well, I hear that a lot, but my standard answer is that I don't know what I'm looking for, because people ask you, what do you look out for, what you want to sign? But when I hear it, I know it. There's oh, just wow, that really? gut feel. You have, you listen to some, somebody and you say, wow, this sounds really different. Uh, and for, I mean, so many, you know, the movie, music moves in cycle. We're in that age of Afro pop now where everything is just about the beat and yes. dance floor music. Uh, those kind of music don't necessarily appeal to me when I really want to invest. Okay. I want to invest on something that in 20 years' time is still relevant mm -hmm. and still you know, will still make sense. We've had some musicians um, as guests here, yeah. and that's one of the questions that I keep on asking, is why is there that the musicians are afraid to diversify? Because all we hear is Afro-pop. Yeah. So do, would you sign on a classical musician, or uh, is that something that you're Depending looking at? Depending on what I hear, it's yeah. just that, I don't know, I think... Because that's one, as one mm. genre in mm. music that we haven't conquered here in Nigeria. I can just probably name one or two classical musicians that Absolutely. are out of Nigeria. Yeah. And I feel like that's a, an aspect that, you know, we should look into. I mean, mm. you as a, as, a, as a record label owner. <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't even sign a classical musician okay. just because, oh, people are not investing in that. I want to sign that classical musician who's been able to fuse that fusion with something that traditionally makes sense within our cultural space. Hmm. See, because what we have to sell is just that identity as Nigerians, our language. The reason why Nigeria, uh, Nigerian music has taken over the world is because of that original element of our language, our culture, you know, hmm. even our dance steps, you know, and all of those, fusion of all of those traditions. So uh, we... Without that, I don't think it's going to make too much sense for me because that's part of what I want to sell. A music, music curates our tradition, our history. I, 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 one of my favorite musicians is uh, Ayala Omoura. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. <laughs> and there was one song that he said, if, you, if a woman is pretty and does not have good manners, mm -hmm. uh, I can't marry her. But if a woman is pretty, if a woman is not even pretty or but has good manner, I can well, spend one thousand. So within that time, if you go back in history, check the value of one thousand for that period. Absolutely, mm, doctor. You know what I'm saying? So that's what music is about. <laughs> no, I won't say. <laughs> 
Don't, don't think I'm like, trying to advertise my talent so that I can sign me on. <laughs> I was sure that's where you were going. <laughs> anyway, please continue. All right, Doctor. So that, that's what I'm saying. So how do we curate our tradition? Yeah. The, the languages are dying. Part of the saving grace of this country today is still music. That fusion, what Fino does in the Southeast, mm. collaborating with Olamide in the Southwest, mm. is building bridges across this country. And I think the government and the powers that are being needs to be able to harness this and build the youth for the future. Well, let me ask you, let's go back to advertising. If you look at the advertising industry, uh, many of these uh, companies have international affiliation. Yes. Um, are you also planning to go that way, you know, Oglivy, yeah. uh, Leo Burnett, you know, all these uh, giants? And how positive do you think that is for the ones that are already up? Well, it started very well back in the days, if you trace the history of uh, some of the founding fathers of this industry. I mean, there, there was a period where it was the in thing, or what's it's like a marriage, you now have a foreign name attached to your name. So people wanted all of those affiliations. But in the past, I say five, six years, all the relationship has been going down south now because the guys who gave you the affiliation now says, no, I just don't want you to have my name anymore. I want to come and take over your company. Give me 51%. Mm. Mm. Even though there's a statutory policy from, uh, from APCON that says uh, no foreigner can own more than 25% of a Nigerian uh, entity. entity, for instance. But all of those things, has, people are butting head. So we sat down at Extreme and said, okay, we could, go the other, we could go the traditional route of saying we're looking for affiliation left, right, and center, or we could sit down here and create a brand that we can actually export, which is what we've done. Today, Extreme Ideas is present, has footprint across six other, five other African countries beyond Nigeria. So gradually, we're building our own African network based on our value, based on our, our best practices that we've been able to uh, make work in Nigeria. Well, music, advertising, I mean, you're well established in the creative industry in Nigeria. What has been your experience with copyright issues, with piracy of intellectual property? Maybe when I was talking about some of the challenges we were facing, yes. again, that's one of the key challenges. Intellectual property, people flagrantly just abuse it. They just feel, you see a situation where they take your materials, your intellectual property, somebody just will use it, and then they'll tell you, oh, we recreated it. And so now that the recreated one is actually our own our now, own which makes no sense yeah. whatsoever. I mean, somebody came up with that idea. So uh, I think we need to do more. And when people ask, why is there, are we not able to conquer this monster? I'll say, all the laws are there. We just need to give those laws teeth. Because when people know that uh, there will be consequences when you do some of these things, we, we set uh, a barrier and, and prevent people from doing it. Well, this program today, we've been talking about ideas. Yes. Uh, Dr. Okali, who was here before you, he was talking about a culture of ideas. Absolutely. And then your company is uh, named uh, Extreme, Extreme ideas. ideas. But in terms of ideas, what will you say to young people mm -hmm. who will turn 40 also mm -hmm. and then say, I want to be like Steve Babeko, I want to go into entrepreneurship? Or even people that just have ideas and they cannot implement yes. them. How, how can you give us some strategies? Well, I'll just say, that? conquer your fears. You know, that's. One of the things that changed my life, there was one time uh, a, a company was bringing some speaker, I think an African-American speaker, uh, to come and speak here. You know, he, he's a motivational speaker, I forgot his name now. And one of the quotes, they used one of the quotes of the guy for the headline of the press ad. It says, everything you deserve is on the other side of fear. Mm. You see? So it is being able to just recognize that fear exists. I know you exist, but the, all the things I deserve are just across the border from where you are. How are you able to look fear in the air, eyes, still feel your fear, but still go ahead and do it? I think that's the most important thing young people need to understand. Sometimes your life depends on the, whether your idea comes full circle or not. Well, thank you very much, Steve right. right. I think on that note, yes. uh, thank you we'll much. let you go. Thank you you know, we've enjoyed this very much. Thank you, Ajay. Well, I hope to see you soon. Well, I look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> All right, thank oh, you. Those are the two of you. Well, we've talked about it, so don't worry about it. No, don't it, leave me out of that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not Steve, you guys are going to see. <laughs> now you're going to Dr. Jealous. <laughs>
No, I don't want him making more money than I do now. It's signing him off. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me.